Trent, Tim has talked about playing faster this this uh, spring in, in in part to you know to help get the get the turn get the takeaway totals up. How much of that comes from the just the video room? Just learn is that a lot of it? Just learn how to play faster by watching more video. Uh, that's part of it. It's the it's the watching video and constant reinforcement of decision making. Um, when to shoot your gun, when to, you know, when to transition your feet this way, and then spending a lot of time in individual drills, constantly working how we transition our feet. And then it's also taking it into team periods, you know, when we're in tag or thud tempo where we're still staying up but still getting that same trigger and, and being a little bit more, you don't want to say reckless, but reckless towards the ball carrier rather than breaking down and coming to balance and all those things, you know, you, you used to do. Right with all this open field stuff, you, you got to be able to shoot your gun on your leverage. If you do miss, miss to the guy's chase, and that's the big thing. How much improvement have you seen in that area in terms of just playing faster this spring? Uh, it's quite a bit, uh, quite a bit, especially especially in the back end because they're they're really the ones that 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 they get a lot more of those times where they got to just go cut things off and turn the thing back. I've seen much more aggressiveness and. And the improvement in that in the back end has been huge and really all over, but really notice it in the back end. Trent, talk about what uh, Jack Coletto has been able to give you at inside linebacker with uh, Avery, obviously on the shelf this spring. Well, Jack's smart, so he, he can he can get the, everyone lined up. He can communicate all the calls. Uh, he, he's just great that way. His presence kind of calms everyone because he can he can make the communications and then there's no panic when he's in. Uh, which is huge at that position, especially that Mike position. And then he's he's upped his physicality from a year ago. He's just stronger, but he's also, you know, learning the position. He was just trying to learn it last year. He's now got the hang of for all the different angles and fits. And then now he can cut it loose a little more like like the rest of the guys. It's obviously been said many times, but just talk about that versatility, obviously being able to contribute all that at inside linebacker and then, you know, occasionally sneak in a few reps on the other side. Yeah, I mean, that's huge for us. He was obviously, I think he averaged like nine yards of carry last year. Um, so he's been big for our short yardage and red zone packages. And, and we want to expand on that with him. And But his ability to do both is impressive. And, and that comes from, he's just a very, not only smart kid, but he works really hard at the, the studying of his position, whatever that may be. Have you ever seen anybody who kind of can do the day-to-day stuff that he does in terms of being involved in so many position groups and still kind of uh, doing everything that he needs to do. I've never coached or been around a guy that's played on both sides of the ball and, and been able to, to do, especially the quarterback position and then the linebacker position. Those are two very mentally tough positions to play. Can you kind of take us through, kind of, at least from your perspective, what that looks like with him on a day to day? Like, is he just kind of flying yeah. from meeting to meeting? So what we do is me and Lingren always talk about when they need to use him. And then we talk about, okay, when, you know, meet with him after this. So he'll meet with us as linebackers. Then he'll go get with Lingren and go over the install. And then maybe the walkthrough that day, we'll give him Jack to the offense for the walkthrough and then some, some team periods and individual periods. We just kind of communicate when we're going to use him here. So we're both on the same page and Jack knows where he's going most importantly. Yeah. um, Alex, uh, um, you've got, uh, a couple of guys in the NFL draft this weekend. I was just curious, what did you learn from those two guys, Dunn and and Nashawn, over your during your last year? Uh, you know, since I came in, uh, they both were the, were, my, were here my first year in. So just looking up to those guys as a freshman, you know, seeing the work ethic, how they go on about their business, uh, the extra film work, and everything about about themselves, how they carry themselves as a leader. A brother, a teammate, uh, I looked up to them a lot. And then now seeing them go through the draft process is amazing. You know, it just pushes me and the rest of the other guys in our room to just keep going. Now that we see that we got our former brothers going to the NFL this year. So it's amazing. How, how do you how do you uh, believe Oregon State is is helping you guys at your position get ready for the, you know, prepare for a, an NFL dream of, I'm assuming you you have one. Um, how, how, how are they? How, how are they helping you get to that that level? Helping us tremendously, you know, uh, starting with Coach Smith all the way to uh, Tim Tibisar and then our, our de- defensive backs coach, Blue Adams. So they're, they're helping us tremendously just with all the knowledge they have passed down from, from the years of coaching, the guys they coach, the great players. They, they, they 
uh, helping us tremendously, especially Coach Blue with him having the background of coaching in the NFL. So we know the standard and we all know the standard in the room. So we got to meet that standard no matter what. Hey, Alex, with, um, with Nishan and Isaiah uh, having gone to the NFL draft, how much of a responsibility um, do you feel to kind of step up and be that guy now? You know, I'm, I, I want to take full responsibility for that. You know, with Shawnee gone and Dunny gone now, uh, I'm one of the guys coming back along with uh, some of the other guys like Jaden, Grant, and uh, I'm one of the guys that they're looking forward to, to, to with the experience on my belt to go in and, and hold it down. So I'm looking, in, I'm looking to come in and take over that job and just be the guy at, at corner. What do you think was kind of the most significant or most important thing or a few things that you took out of playing so much last season? Um, the knowledge and experience, the IQ. Uh, last year was my first full season on the grass every game. So just all the knowledge and IQ I learned last year from mistakes to, to IQ, like I said, just I'm playing way faster now, so much more comfortable. Communication is there, everything. So, Was there a moment where it kind of started clicking for you last year where it kind of felt like the game was slowing down and you weren't just that, that first year player anymore? Yeah, for sure. I'll say last year, just as I got comfortable, maybe week three, four, as I was getting more comfortable and accumulated into things, uh, it, was, it, was, it was slowing down for sure. Yeah, Alex, just talk about uh, the uh, the competition in the secondary and just the depth that you guys had. You know, the coaches have been very complimentary of, you know, how deep the group is. What have you seen out there through spring? Uh, our whole group is on go. Uh, we have a lot of depth in our room, like you just mentioned. So everybody's competing every day. It's a it's a nonstop competition in every every position group. We all just push each other to be better. Go in the room. We all know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So that's what helps us as well. Just being able to, to tell your brother do this or to help him with this and that. So everybody's competing. It's a it's an all out uh, fun. It's fun every day at the end of the day. We have fun on the grass with our brothers. Well, Alex, yeah. have, you been in, have you been in communication with Nashawn and, and Isaiah in, in the last week or so? Just to, as you know, as the draft is coming up here. Yeah, I, uh, I talked to him yesterday. Just to let him know. Good luck. Uh, I'm praying for them and uh, just wish all blessings their way. Hey, I wanted to ask about um, Zariah Beeson, just from a kind of from your perspective, from a quarterback's perspective. What, what's it like matching up with him? Man, I love that composition every day I practice. Uh, Zariah, he, he's a guy on the team that's going to work every day, every play. You're not going to take a snap off. So me being able to compete with Zariah every day is, is I love it. He's he's a he's a baller, a baller for sure. Bright future. What do you think he kind of does well that, that makes that kind of such a tough matchup? Um, just he, he knows how to use his, his size for, for his receiver size. So he, ha he has a big body frame. He's nice and strong. He knows how to catch. He can move. He's a, just all around good receiver. Yeah. Um, Isaac, you've, uh, you've started your first three years at Oregon state. Are, are you approaching this year as, as, this, as if it's your last year or, or are you, would you consider coming back for a, for even a fifth year? Uh, honestly, it's just all on the Lord's time and, you know, whatever happens, I mean, um, obviously, you know, depending on how next year goes, you know, we'll see, we see what the Lord has in store for me. What do, what do you feel like you've most learned over your, over your four year career? Um, I think honestly, it's just every year learning how to work harder than you did the last year. And, um, just always coming to each year with, you know, a humble attitude and saying, okay, I'm trying to earn a starting spot again. And just, um, yeah, just working hard. And, um, yeah. Obviously I mentioned earlier, you've started your first three years. How do you, how do you keep that attitude that, you know, being a starter isn't a given, given deal. Do you, do you approach it like that? Or do you feel like, you've earned the right to start or, or how do you approach it? I always approach it. You know, my dad told me my freshman year, just you, you approach every single year, like you're a freshman again. And that continues even to when you're in the, you know, you're in the highest level of football, you treat it like you're a guy trying to earn, just a guy trying to earn, earn a starting job. So just treating it the same every single year, no, no matter what happens. 
Isaac, just talking about the defensive line in general this spring, it really seems like whether it's short yardage situations, goal line situations, there's just a better push up front. Would you kind of agree with that? And then what would you maybe think as to why that kind of maybe flipped? Yeah, I just think, you know, we as a defensive line room, I think we've grown a lot. And, you know, I think uh, since I've been here, I think it's kind of the best group of collection of guys we've had. Um you know, and, and the aspect of just wanting to work hard and wanting to get better and wanting to, you know, take that next step in that in their game. So I think it's just a combination of everyone gaining a little bit of weight and just continuing to get after in the weight room and, uh, yeah, just the weight room and eating, basically. Life of a um, lineman. How intense was kind of the off season as far as you guys just wanting to, like you said, have that that improvement? Was, was it a pretty intense off season? Yeah, I mean, we're still in that off season kind of mo so it's still going uh but yeah just you know the goal was to gain a little more weight and get stronger in the weight room and uh, i think we've all kind of we're all approaching our goals or already at them and then trying to just continue to uh surpass them so how do you go about kind of trying to do that at this point but when you've been here so long like it, what way in what ways can you kind of still put on weight when you've been at it for this long if that makes sense uh i mean it's it's really a simple formula if you want to gain weight you've got to eat more than you're burning um yeah i mean eat a lot of food i guess that's that's the game plan uh there's no way around it i mean you can't just magically gain weight and obviously you want to gain good weight you don't want to just gain all fat so it's I mean, it's we have a great nutrition staff and a great uh, weight room staff who are able to help us, you know, continue in our goals in the weight room and on the field. Uh, just just based on what it, on, on what it shows on the roster, I think as a freshman, you were 265 and now they're showing you at 274. Is that about what you want to be? And how 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 hard has it been to put on weight for, for yourself? Uh, it has, it, it's been hard because I've always trying to, you know, I'm trying to keep my quickness. So it's hard to gain weight in a very short period of time, but it's just honestly a lot of dedication and like, you got to wake up really early and start your day early so you could get more meals in. And um, yeah, I mean, that weight was my freshman year was kind of generous, but like the weight now I'm, I'm pushing around. Uh, I'm trying to get to a push farther past 275 so that in the season I can have that uh, fluctuation if I need because uh, it's a long season so yeah it's been it's been a grind and then just trying to change your body composition of you know being it's one thing to be 265 at you know this a high body fat but to be 275 at a lower body fat is, is a lot harder but uh, you know as I said it's it's easy when you have a good nutrition staff and a good weight weight room staff. There, there's, you, a, there's a lot of people that would, would, would like to have your problem having to eat all day long, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't run away from the meals, so, and I don't have to. Not to make this all meal talk, but I mean, do you have like a go-to meal or a couple things that um, have worked really well for you for gaining that good weight? Yeah. So my go-to meal is, is then my breakfast meal. It's going to be, uh, it's some called couscous. It's called Mor it's like Moroccan style couscous. It's it's basically like a high protein rice, and I'll do a cup and a half of that dry. So that right there is twelve hundred calories, and then I add a banana, which is one hundred twenty calories, and two dates, one hundred twenty calories, and then a little uh, soy uh, chocolate milk, which is about one hundred forty calories. So all that combined comes to about like a little over fifteen hundred calories, and that's just breakfast. So. Uh, that's that's my staple meal for real, uh, for sure. But, uh, you know, if there's any couscous uh, manufacturers out there that want to, you know, maybe in the next level, give me a little sponsorship. That'd be nice. Not here, though. NCAA rules. So that doesn't, that doesn't sound too tasty to me. Does that, does that, does that taste good? Yeah, man, it tastes amazing. You should try it. It's really good. Couscous has no flavor. So it has the only the flavor that you add to it is what it is. And dates are really good they're super sugary and you know it's good for you plus you know we work out a lot so i can afford a little extra sugar but it's good y'all should try it for sure i feel like i need to go on a run after just listening to that 
Yeah, me too. It, the, the thing is, though, is you eat it and it's a lot. It's if it, it feels like it's going to be heavy, but it's not heavy. So it's easy. It digests really fast. So it's not like you're eating a bunch of waffles and pancakes, which is going to make you feel heavy. This makes you feel light. So trust me, I'm an expert here, guys. Is it just dates or do you put anything else in it? No, I do. I do. So I'll mush up a banana and then dates, too. So it's the, I mean, both those natural sugars kind of combine and then the, the chocolate soy, soy milk. So it's, it's real good. Y'all should try it. Maybe some cinnamon too. Some cinnamon. I forgot to mention that. So, and you don't step inside it. You don't step inside fast food restaurants anymore. Is that? Uh, I mean, maybe Subway every now and again, you know, I love Subway. I, I, I love Subway, but yeah, I mean, mostly it's just all cooking myself. Look at you throwing out all the sponsorship stuff. <laughs> nope. NCAA rules. 